ask you to grant me Oh Allah, I ask you to grant me Paradise Paradise Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers of Madani Channel, welcome and مرحبا to another episode of this series Hasten Towards Paradise in the beautiful month of Ramadan Alhamdulillah in today's episode and program we are going to discuss the last 10 days of salvation from hell. And before we do that, let's inshallah Azza wa Jal first and foremost recite durood and salam in the court of the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And for that, I would uh, first of all like to welcome our guest for today. And at the same time, mashallah, I would request him to uh, extol the virtues of reciting Salat and Salam in the court of beloved Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, Ya Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakallahu wa na sahib. It's always a pleasure to be here, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, it's always good to have you, Ya Sayyidi, as we have, alhamdulillah, commenced with our episode for today. And uh, uh, let's at the same time now extol the virtues of reciting Salat and Salam in the court of beloved Mustafa. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I would like you to have the honor of doing that. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Our beloved Master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has very beautifully mentioned that the one who recites Salat upon me a hundred times a day, Allah Azza wa Jal writes between his two eyes that this person is free from hypocrisy. Subhanallah. And Allah Azza wa Jal will keep this person with the shuhada, with the martyrs on the day of judgment, inshallah. Ameen. Bijahi Nabil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us such that through the virtues of reciting salat and salam in the court of beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa we also granted freedom from the hellfire. Ameen. Bijahi Nabil. Ameen. And now, without further ado, let's inshallah recite salat and salam in the court of beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after the recitation of salat and salam let's now inshallah introduce our segment for today and that is test yourself where we alhamdulillah test ourselves on our islamic knowledge and try to increase our knowledge of islam quran sunnah knowledge with regards to fasting and other beautiful aspects of our beautiful deen of islam and today's question alhamdulillah is it displayed on your screen the question for today is the initial verses of which surah were revealed first and you have four options to choose from option a surah al-falaq option b surah al-alaq option c surah al-fatiha and option d surah al-waqi'ah so yes, inshallah, these are your options to choose from and one of them is the correct option. So as you have now chosen your option according to your own understanding, inshallah, the correct answer, however, will be revealed to you towards the end of today's program episode. And I would hope that you stay with us and you continue watching this uh, program and this silsila right till the end, inshallah, and you will also be shown the correct answer towards the end. After we have, alhamdulillah, recited Salat and Salam in the court of beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa let's now make a plea in the court of the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for salvation, inshallah azza wa jal. manzoor dua karna जब वक्त नज़ा आए दीदार आता करना ऐसा ज़ुगुम बदवाले 
منظور دعا کرنا جب وقت نزا آئے دیدار تا کرنا اے نور خدا آ کر آنکھوں میں سما جانا اے نور خدا آ کر آنکھوں میں سما جانا یا در پہ بلا لینا یا خواب میں آ جانا یا در پہ بلا لینا یا خواب میں آ جانا ہے پردنشی دل کے پردوں میں رہا کرنا جب وقت نزا آئے دیدار عطا کرنا اے سبز گمبد والے منظور دعا کرنا جب وقت نزا آئے دیدار عطا کرنا میں قبر اندھیری میں گبراؤگ جب تنہا امداد میری کرنے آجانا میرے کو اے نور خدا کرنا جب وقت نزا آئے دیدار عطا کرنا مجرم ہو جہاں بھر کا محشر میں بھرم رکھنا مجرم ہو جہاں بھر کا محشر میں بھرم رکھنا رسوائے زمانہ ہو دامن میں چھپا لینا مقبول یہ عرض میری للہ ذرا کرنا جب وقت نزا آئے دیدار عطا کرنا اے سبز گمبد والے منظور دعا کرنا جب وقت نزا آئے دیدار عطا کرنا چہرے سے زیا پائی ان چاند ستاروں نے اس دل سے شفا پائے دکھ درد کے ماروں نے آتا ہے انہیں سابے ہر دکھ کی دعا کرنا جب وقت نزا آئے دیدار عطا پینا اے سبز گمبد والے منظور دعا کرنا 
जब वक्त नजा दीदार आमीन बिजाहिन नबी नमीन सलमदीन in the last 10 days of ramadan it is stated in the book deeds leading to hell published by the publishing department of maktabatul madina yo daawat islami it has been narrated that once amir almu'minin sayyidna umar ibn khattab radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu said to sayyidna kaab al ahbar that o oh, kaab tell us something frightful so sayyidna kaab radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu Humbly said, O Amir al-Mu'minin, if you bring the deeds of seventy prophets, alayhi musallam, on the day of judgment, so seeing the matters of the day of judgment, you will consider them contemptible. Having heard this, Amir al-Mu'minin, رضي الله تعالى عنه, bowed his head for a while, and then, as he, رضي الله تعالى عنه, recovered from this state, and said, O Kaab. Tell us more. Then Sayyidina Kaab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu humbly said, O Amir al-Mu'minin, if a part equal to a nose of a bull is opened in the east from the hell, so the brain of the person present in the west will flow out after being boiled due to its heat. Allahu Akbar. Such intense is the heat. of jahannam upon hearing this amir al mu'minin sayyidina umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu bowed his head for a while and then having recovered from the state he radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu said o kaab tell me more then sayyidina kaab radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu humbly said o amir al mu'minin on the day of judgment hell will blaze in such a way that every beloved angel or prophet will be on his knees saying rabbi nafsi nafsi oh my lord today i do not ask for anything but my forgiveness allahu akbar allahu akbar sayyidina kaab al ahbar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu further states that when the day of judgment comes then allah azza wa jalla will gather those who came first and last on a mound then angels will appear and make rows and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say o jibril bring hell so sayyidina jibril alayhi salam will bring the hell in the manner that its 700000 bridles will be pulled when the hell will be at, at a distance of 100 years from the creation it will blaze to such an extent that the creations the creatures will tremble with fear it will happen again and every beloved angel and prophet will fall upon their knees when it will blaze the third time the heart of the people will come up to their throat and their wisdom will become scared even sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam will humbly say i only beg for me by the sadaqa of me being your khalil your friend ya allah sayyidina musa alayhi salam will humbly say i by the sadaqa of my supplications only beg for me sayyidina isa alayhi salam will humbly say o oh allah whatever honor you have given to me by the sadaqa of it i only beg for me i do not beg for sayyida maryam radhiyallahu ta'ala anha who gave birth to me allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar this is the state of the anbiya alayhi salam the most pious human beings to ever walk the earth allahu akbar if this is the day state on the day of judgment 
what would be our state? Let's inshallah Azza wa Jal make this dua in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. Baruz Qiyamat ho, aisi inayat rahu pul besabit qadam ya ilahi. Jalade na nare jahannam karam ho, paye badshah e umam ya ilahi. Mujhe nare dozakh se dar lag raha hai. Ho mujh na tawa par karam ya ilahi. जो नाराज तू हो गया तो कहीं का रहूंगा ना तेरी कसम या इलाही सदा के लिए हो जा राजी खुदाया हमेशा हो लुत्फो करम या इलाही गुनाहों से भरपूर नामा है मेरा मुझे बख्श दे कर करम या इलाही अल्लाहुम अजिरनी मिन अल्लार या मुजीरो या मुजीरो या मुजीर برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين امين بجاه النبي الامين so brothers of this is the frightful hadith that we have come to know from sayyidna kaab al ahbar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu who was a great qari of the holy, holy quran who had a great vast knowledge of the holy quran subhanallah and sayyidna umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu is asking me for advice and counseling and he is telling him about what will unfold on the day of judgment and this is this actually instills the fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within us and makes us realize that the fire of hell on the day of judgment it is no joke it is real it is as real allah but that even at the distance of 100 years we will be able to feel it allah akbar and even the anbiya alayhi salam will be making dua for themselves on the, they will forget the rest of the creation. In that state, where will we fall? People like us who are not even fit to be or to, to serve the shoes of the Anbiya alayhi salam, where will we fall? Shouldn't we be worried about our salvation? Shouldn't we be worried about our end results as the hadith of the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa is innam al-amalu bil khawateen. The deeds are considered by the end results. So how is our khatima going to happen? Is our khatima going to happen on iman? Is our khatima going to happen in a state where we have been made free and being forgiven from our sins? Is our khatima going to be in the state where we are, have attained salvation from the fire of hell? This, in this month of Ramadan, we can ensure that we work towards attaining this goal, inshallah. Insha Allah, Allah, the last 10 days of Ramadan are the days about which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said the first 10 days, they are mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The middle 10 days, they are forgiveness. And the last 10 days, they are salvation from hellfire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees thousands of people. Subhanallah. On every subhanallah. night of Ramadan, subhanallah. And in the night, the Laylatul Ja'iza, the last night of Ramadan, subhanallah. On that night, he frees the amount of people collectively from the first of Ramadan till the last of Ramadan. Allah collectively Allah. equal to that number of people in, the, in one night alone. Subhanallah. So how many hundreds of thousands of people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees in the nights of Ramadan. Let's inshallah make dua that we are also from amongst those fortunate souls that have been forgiven in the month of Ramadan. Ameen. 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 Muran sahab, uh, this is uh, the way of to admonish ourselves as Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He would really think about it after every rendition of the narration that Sayyidina Kaab al-Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala would convey to him and he would think about it then he will say okay tell me more tell me more you know Muna Sahib these were if you look at this beautiful narration this beautiful waqia the advices that were given was such advices that brought about benefit not only about matters pertaining to this world but rather matters pertaining to the hereafter Allah matters Allah. pertaining to to how the situation would be on the day of qiyamah 
you know currently the uh, the the sun it's back facing us and yet we still feel the heat when you know the 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 degrees they start raising up they start going sky high and it becomes so hot so unbearable that we 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 cannot even do anything we cannot we we, we become restless we get agitated we find it hard to do anything because of the intensity of the heat but on the day of qiyama the sun will only be one mile away from us with its front facing towards us imagine on that day how how hot it would be it's mentioned also that on that day it will be dark it will be hot the ground will be made of copper people would be on a different level on a total different another level of anxiousness of restlessness they would be standing there helpless don't uh, uh, don't know what to do they would be scared they would be frightened and it's mentioned in in the in the narrations that people would start to sweat they would start to perspire some would sweat up to their ankles some up to their knees some up to the uh, the the chest some up to their necks and as for the unbelievers they would be drowning in their own sweat subhanallah it's mentioned they would be drowning in their own sweat to such an extent that they would try to keep themselves afloat allahu akbar so these are some of the frightening scenes that would be occurring on the day of qiyama but the question is mona sahib that knowing all of this of 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 the of the occurrences on the day of qiyama on the day of judgment how everything would be you know the the frightening scenes people as we've heard now people would be drowning in their own sweats how do we prepare ourselves how do we gain salvation from the freedom of hell this is you know a question that we need to ask ourselves and one of out of many numerous ways one of the ways as we've heard earlier as well also is to recite the rudi pak upon rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam for 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 the uh, for the narration goes as as it is mentioned that a a reminder is beneficial for a believer so for for baraka we will mention it again inshallah where in nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentions the one who recites salat salutations upon me 100 times a day allah azza wa jal writes between his two eyes that this person he is free from hypocrisy and free from hell fire and allah azza wa jal will join him with the shuhada on the day of qiyama so this is one angle you want to gain salvation increase your recitation upon rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam recite durud sharif 100 times upon rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam if we look at another angle another angle can also be to have fear of allah azza wa jal because having the fear of allah azza wa jal is the main and the only cure to having salvation from the horrors of the day of judgment if we look at it without this fear we may be hopeful but having hope is another thing you may be hopeful that oh, you know what i will do this and i will do that while while we are in this world i will do this act i will do that act but then it happens such that you never end up doing that act the only thing that is happening is having long hopes and long hopes it destroys your present because you are not doing anything you are just sitting there having hopes that okay i will do this i will be forgiven i will be shown mercy but you make no effort so without the fear of allah azza wa jal we cannot be saved from the horrors of the day of judgment 
So this fear of Allah Azza wa Jal is very necessary for each and every one of us to have. And how do we, how do we embed this fear of Allah Azza wa Jal in our hearts? Is by sitting with those who are pious, is by having good company, is by sitting with scholars, with, with, the, with true scholars of the deen of Islam, seeking guidance from them. Because by doing this, we are equipping ourselves by learning about Jahannam, by learning about hell, the, the, the details of hell. It's even mentioned that in order to go towards Jannah, you have to cross a bridge. And this bridge is known as the bridge of Sirat. This bridge, Allahu Akbar, is placed on top of Jahannam. It is placed on top of hell. And it is thinner than a strand of hair, sharper than the edge of a sword. And every single person would cross, would be made to cross this bridge of Sirat. Imagine this bridge, which is thinner than a strand of hair, sharper than the edge of a sword. It is impossible to cross this bridge without the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Fudayl bin Iyad rahimahullah, he mentions that the journey that it will take to cross the bridge of Sirat will be 15,000 years. Allah. 15,000 years, 5,000 years going up, 5,000 years going down, and 5,000 years going straight. And the bridge of Sirat, it is built on top of Jahannam. Yes, on top of Jahannam. Allahu Akbar. And it will be so dark. How would one even cross the bridge of Sirat? You know, you cannot, no, no one can say that because uh, I'm doing gymnastics or, you know, I have such and such flexibility or I do wrestling, etc., etc., I'll be able to cross the, uh, the bridge of Sirat. No, it, it will not work that way. The bridge of Sirat can only be crossed by the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Sayyidi, Jazakallah for enlightening us and Alhamdulillah, at least giving hope that there is hope for those who want salvation, for those of us who are working hard, who are striving for this salvation. And these are some of the channels through which we can attain salvation, Definitely. such as reciting Salat in the court of beloved Mustafa, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, having the taqwa of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, remaining away from the sins and going for those actions uh, that are in the obedience of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the beloved Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, as our age is fading away, we are withering away day by day. Each day we are getting closer to our death. And um, while we are still in our youth, we need to make the most out of this youth, this time, this energy that we have in the month of Ramadan. Subhanallah, we are. So even more, more reason to strive harder in the court of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Sayyidina Mufti Azam Hind Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali would say and remind himself and admonish himself. Hmm. He would say, Jokuchikarlahabukarlohabilurijawatumhoalihabibsalamuhammadsalamuhammadsalamuhammadsalamuhammadsalamuhammadsalamuhammadsalamuhammadsalamuhammadsalamuhammadsalamuhammadsalam
who has recited the durood upon the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salat ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the cure for, our, for the horrors of the day of judgment. When people will be resurrected and there will be chaos. Those that will be safeguarded against the horrors will be those who will have recited durood upon the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says another key to salvation on the day of judgment is to be close to the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we are close to the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nothing could keep us from salvation because he will be there for our salvation. Um, the hadith is that the one closest to me on the day of judgment will be the one who has recited the most durood upon me. Subhanallah. Even on the, on the bridge of Sirat, Malana Sahib, as you have mentioned, the bridge of Sirat, it is mentioned in the narrations that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that your durood upon me will be nur for you on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. So as Subhanallah. you have said, there will be darkness on the bridge of Sirat and it will be such a lengthy journey. That bridge is built on top of hell. The salvation of, from hell will come through only one passes through swiftly. Now remember that particular narration where the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's nur, the salat, upon the beloved Nabi sallallahu will come to aid us in the form of Nur on the bridge of Sirat. What is the fastest moving object? Light. Light, subhanallah. Is there anything faster than light known in the, in the physical realm? We don't know of any, there may be, Allah knows best. But as far as our, the scientific discoveries go, the light is the fastest moving creation, the fastest moving thing. Meaning nothing can beat the speed of light and the speed of the nur of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa the salat ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What can be the speed of that nur subhanallah subhanallah. It will be faster than ever and that will be the speed through which we'll be able to cross the bridge of sirat. And in this way the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would aid and help us. And that's not all. The beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would also make dua that Ya Rabb grant them safe passage. Rabbi Sallim, Rabbi Sallim, Subhanallah. And this beautiful dua of the beloved Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is documented in the poetry of Sayyidi Ala Hazrat Ali Rahma, where he draws our attention towards that phenomenon that would occur on the day of judgment when we'll be crossing the bridge of Sirat. He says, Raza Pul Seyab Wajd Karte Guzari Raza Pul Seyab Wajid karte guzariye ki hai Rabb Sallim Sadaay Muhammad Zahezatoy Tilaay Muhammad Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So yes this is the mercy of the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa upon his ummah. And as his ummah, we can be rest assured that inshallah, if we strive hard, if we follow Allah azza wa jal and the commands of our creator, the commands of the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who's the beloved of the creator, mashallah, salvation cannot be further away from us if we could only adhere to the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal and the Sunnah of the beloved Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that will be our salvation for here in this world and the hereafter inshallah Azza wa Jal Ameen Bijahil Nabil Ameen Sayyidi we are speaking of salvation uh, they are alhamdulillah different channels through which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grants salvation and the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal as it is famously known Rahmate Khudawandi Bahana Mi Joya that Allah's mercy looks for a reason to forgive. So what are the other numerous reasons that we could look for inshallah Azza wa Jal for salvation in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and salvation from the hellfire? Mahan Sahib, there is, there is one very beautiful way out of, of course, so many other <laughs> numerous ways. And that way is, alhamdulillah, for those who are blessed with parents, for them, to respect their parents, to obey their parents, to love their parents, to look 
at the parents with the sight of mercy. This action of obeying one's parents is one of those actions that can grant a person salvation from the horrors on the day of judgment. Allah. And what we see nowadays, Mawla Sahib, is people don't know the, especially children and youngsters and youth out there, they don't know the importance of obeying and respecting one's parents. They take the parents for granted. And you know, this should be as an advice to the youngsters, as an advice to, to all of the youth out there, to all of the children out there, that they should respect their parents, obey their parents, not back chat their parents, not a whole grudges or hate their parents, you know. And if their parents has to shout them, what happens now is the, the kids, they start shouting back, you know, all of these are happening. Now we see that children, they even start, they even started to hit their parents. Allahu Akbar. Allah. And, and this is, is, is definitely against the, the Sharia, against Islam, against the teachings of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it is important for, for those who have parents, for children out there, to always love, respect, obey, and honor their parents. And in this way, you never know, this might be the reason of you being saved from the horrors on the Day of Judgment, inshallah. Insha Definitely, as the beloved Mustafa وسلم, said, that your parents, your mother and father, they are your heaven and hell. Allahu Akbar. So yes, if we treat them rightfully, we can attain Jannah. Definitely. And the paradise lies beneath the feet of the mother and the father is the middle door of Jannah. Subhanallah. 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 So we mustn't forget our access to Jannah lies with them. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And they can be our hell if we disobey them, if we ill treat them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will earn the wrath of Allah Azza wa Jal and we cannot bear the wrath of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah. So Allah. let's not even try. Inshallah Azza wa Jal, we need to strive to gain the pleasure of our parents as the pleasure of Allah lies in their pleasure. Subhanallah. Now, as we have explored different avenues of attaining the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can we uh, gain salvation from the fire of hell? If we want to be safe from the torment of hell and wish to deserve the unending blessings of paradise, we have to stop committing every type of sins such as abandoning salah uh, or shaving of our beards, reducing it to less than a fist, annoying parents, uh, taking women in the market without veiling, watching and showing movies and dramas, listening to songs and playing music, earning haram sustenance, having shares in interest-based businesses, abuses, backbiting, tale-telling, talking too much or rudely about uh, finding false with others and having the company of those friends who do not offer salah and are very fashion conscious. These are some of the ways we can safeguard ourselves against the fire of hell. The fire of hell about which Murasa was just mentioning that the sun is so far away and we cannot bear it. Imagine when it comes closer, how will we, will we be able to bear it? We can't. The earth will melt and turn into copper. That will be the severe heat. And the heat of Jahannam, the heat of the fire of hell, can we imagine the, the fire of this world that we have? Can any of us be brave enough to put our hands in the fire? And that fire is not even the real fire. That fire was cooled. The fire of Jahannam was cooled down, then further cooled, then further cooled. And then only it became bearable for it to be used in the world. Allah. The fire we have. Imagine the real original fire of Jahannam. Allah, but we cannot even bear it. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us the true fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. The true medium and means to really attain our salvation from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by invoking His mercy by doing those actions that are pleasing 
to Allah Azza wa Jal and pleasing to the beloved Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this way we are granted Jannah, the same Jannah that we all ask for five times a day in our du'as. وَادْخِلْنَا الْجَنَّةَ دَارَ السَّلَامِ Ameen bijahin nabi lamin. Inshallah Azza wa Jal we are now going to have a listen to the beautiful kalam which is composed by his eminence Imam Ahmad Raza Khan alayhi rahmatu rahman and uh, after which we will return and continue with, with our episode for today and that is Hasten Towards Paradise, the series you are watching and today's episode being the last 10 days of salvation from hell. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu Sam 
नित वो जी शान गया सास ही मुंशी रहमत का कलम दान गया इन्हें जाना इन्हें माना ना रखा गैर से काम इन्हें जाना इन्हें माना ना रखा गैर से काम लिल्लाम सलमान गया हम में दुनिया से मुसलमान गया नते बात जिस सम वो जी शान गया सास ही मुंशी रहमत का कलम दान गया आज ले उन की पना आज मदद मांगुन से आज ले उन की पना आज मदद मांगुन से फिर न माने गे कयामत में अगर मान गया फिर न माने अगर मान गया नते बात जिस सम वो जी शान गया सास ही मुंशी रहमत का कलम दान गया जानो दिल हो शोखिरद सब तो मदी ने पहुँचे जानो दिल हो शोखिरद सब तो मदी ने पहुँचे तुम नहीं चल सा तो सामान गया तुम नहीं चल तेरा जा सारा तो सामान गया नैमते बात जिस सम वो जी शान गया सास ही मुंशी रहमत का कलम दान गया या रसूल या हबीब सल्लाहमद वेलकम बैक टूजिफुल कलाम एंड नाउ वी हैव रिटर्न एंड लेस इन शाहजल कंटिन्यू विद आवर टॉपिक फॉर टूडे एंड दैट इज द लास्ट टेन डेज ऑफ फ्रीडम फ्राम हेल्थ इन दिस रिगार्ड इज मैंशन in a beautiful book of maktabatul madina the last 10 days of freedom from hell about that inshallah azza wa jal about freedom and salvation from hell fire 
It is mentioned that one of the best means of preventing sins is that we have the fear of Allah, keeping in mind the disgrace and insult of the Day of Judgment upon committing sins. Because fear of Allah Azza wa Jal is the only medicine through which the cure of sins is possible. As long as we are deprived of getting its this blessing, it is almost impossible to hate sins and love virtues. Let's listen to inshallah Azza wa Jal, the hadith of the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wasallam about the excellence of crying in the fear of Allah in order to create the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal in the hearts. The fire of hell in the first hadith the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentions that the fire of hell will not touch two eyes. One which cries any part of the night due to the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the second is that uh, standing on guard in the cause of Allah. In the second hadith, it is mentioned that a person humbly said, how can I be safe from the hell? So the beloved Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, by virtue of the tears of your eyes, because the fire of hell will never touch the eye that cries due to the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. In the third hadith, the beloved Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the eyes of three men will not see the hell. One that guards in the path of Allah. The second that weeps due to the fear of Allah. And the third one is that stops rising towards the things which are made haram by Allah. So yes, we shouldn't raise our eyes towards things that are made haram by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these things, if we, if we do these things, then inshallah azza wa jal we can be we can attain salvation from the fire of hell at least our eyes will be safeguarded allahu akbar and the eyes of three men will not even see hell according to the hadith of beloved mustafa sallallahu that we won't even oh, see hell it will be kept far away from us may allah azza wa jal make it such that our actions are such that Jahannam is kept far away. Amen. Sayyidina Anas bin Malik anhu, has said that I have heard the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa saying that, O oh people, cry. And if you cannot cry, so try to cry. Because hell dwelling people will cry in the hell. Even their tears will flow on their faces as if they are streams until their tears will end up and then their blood will start to flow and the blood will flow in so much quantity that if a boat is sailing in it, it will sail in it. Allah Mere ashk bahte rahe kaash har dam tere khauf se ya khuda ya ilahi ameen bijahin nabi lameen sallu alal habib Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So see, these are the accounts and the hadith of the beloved Mustafa sallallahu and the advice that we receive from the noble court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the extent we should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should cry in the fear of Allah. That will prevent us, the fire of hell, from ever touching us, inshallah, on the day of judgment. Inshallah. So in, in one hadith, the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even says that uh, we won't, those eyes won't even see the fire of hell. Allah. So yes, these are actually the glad tidings of the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and some of the beautiful advices for us to keep in mind as to what will work in our favor and what will work against us on the day of judgment. You know, Mala Sahib, just as, f f for instance, just as, you know, we, alhamdulillah, in our houses, we secure our houses and make sure that it is safe and sound. We take the measures of safety and we put up a fence, we put up burglar guards and some go with the full package, electric fencing, you know, everything. When it comes to our vehicles, some take out a policy, and if anything happens to the vehicle, 
then it can be it can get reimbursed you get a new vehicle that vehicle the old one will get fixed up mm. and would come back etc etc so people in this dunya in this world take various forms of measures to secure what they have in every way possible why because they don't want to incur a loss they don't want to see a loss they want to be progressing they want to be on the safe side like that we also need to secure our akhirah we also need to secure our hereafter we need to keep our hereafter safe as well and we need to take measures into doing that and what kind of measures do we take into securing our hereafter as we've heard so many beautiful narrations so many beautiful parables and and ways in which we can secure our hereafter uh, for instance weeping in the fear of allah subhanahu crying in the fear of allah subhanahu serving one's parents reciting salawat upon rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam avoiding bad company keeping good company because by keeping good company you automatically want to do more and more and more good deeds without any pressure you don't even feel you don't even feel it being a burden on your shoulder by doing more and more good deeds you actually feel you know a, a pleasure in doing more and more good deeds why because now you are with good company you, you are not feeling this left out kind of uh, thing you know uh, where it comes like with bad company the peer pressure comes in and then automatically you just go with the flow but here it's not like that here with good company you are indulged in every activity because every activity with good company is good good company means pious obviously so if you are with the company of those who are pious automatically you will start doing those deeds those pious deeds throughout your life without experiencing it a burden on one shoulder and in that way you are securing your hereafter because while is doing good the fear of allah is entering your heart the mercy of allah is entering your heart you all of these uh, all of these traits and characteristics are making you ponder are making you ponder of the matters of the hereafter and imam ghazali rahimahullah he says that to ponder over matters of the hereafter in this world one who ponders over matters of the hereafter in this world will be more protected on the day of qiyamah subhanallah why because whilst in this world you are continuously thinking that what will be my state on the day of qiyamah what will be my condition on the day of qiyamah because we don't know whether we are going to jannah whether we are going to jahannam we don't know how our end would be so we are always continuously thinking what would be our state am i going to enter jannah or am i going to enter jahannam uh will i be receiving my book of deeds in my right hand or in my left hand would my scale my uh, the, the, my, my good deeds would it be heavier or would it be lower we don't know anything so this is what keeps us balanced fear of allah and hope fear and hope are two things that you know these two feelings it keeps a believer in balance because you have to have hope doesn't mean that you must not have hope hope is important you have to have hope in the mercy of allah so always have hope on the other hand always have the fear of allah azza wa jal the mercy of allah yes it is there allah is rahman allah is rahim but on the other hand the justice of allah azza wa jal is also there that is why to have the fear of allah azza wa jal is also very important and when we have these two things embedded into our hearts then we would find ourselves 
contemplating over matters of the hereafter more than we more than we contemplate on worldly matters and in this way we would be securing our hereafter because mona sahib that is our primary objective that is our objective to secure the permanent place which foolish person wants to secure a place which is temporary no one would want to invest in something that is temporary everyone would want to invest in something that is everlasting that is of quality you know that is permanent and this dunya this world is something which is temporary it is it, it you cannot invest in it because it's not everlasting whereas the hereafter that is the place where one needs to invest in by pondering over it by doing good deeds that would lead one towards jannah and not towards jahannam and when we know about those actions which takes one towards jahannam and this comes with learning with reading books with reading good books by being in good company especially with the beautiful organization of da'wat islami because in this beautiful organization we come to know of those actions that take one towards jahannam like backbiting lying stealing theft robbery all various sorts of crime disobedience towards one's parents all of these actions there are so many more but all of these actions take one towards jahannam and when we know of the actions that take one towards jahannam automatically we will abstain from them why because we do not want to go there if we don't want to go there we know we don't want to go there why must we commit those actions exactly we know we don't want to go there why commit those actions but yet on the other hand we know the about the actions that take one towards jannah the actions that take one towards jannah we need to do those actions it will be super foolish of us not to do those actions that take one towards jannah but we are always doing those actions that are taking us towards jahannam how does that make sense we have to put you know our our priorities in order we have to know what we want in life we have to focus on our objective on our goal and our goal is the hereafter our goal is to be with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam insha allah azza wa jalla and for that we have to do the acts that are leading towards jannah to follow in the footsteps of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam insha allah amin bi jahin nabi la min sayyidi Um, brought our attention towards something very important that is to have and to attain the taqwa and the piety the fear of Allah azza wa jal and also to be in the company of those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely uh, with the same mindset sohbati salih tura salih kull subhanallah so may the company of the pious make you pious inshallah azza wa jal inshallah and uh, when we do the the deeds of piety the deeds of taqwa together that has even more strength subhanallah so yes um there was this um, group of three men and they were traveling to some place and they took shelter in in a cave and this account is mentioned in the hadith of the beloved mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said these three men they took shelter in a, in a cave and while they were in the cave a rock fell a giant boulder fell and block the entrance of the cave so there was no way for them to get out of there and they they didn't have three men how much strength should they have to move a huge boulder of the mountain come on so they couldn't go they, they couldn't get themselves out of the situation so this was the huge obstacle in their path so they all got together they said what's the solution so they came up with a solution that we must all make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the pious actions through our taqwa that we have attained in our lives mm. so one of them he said okay let's do this he started making dua he said that the act of taqwa that i have done is that i used to milk my cattle 
my livestock and uh, I would first offer the milk to my parents before offering it to my wife or, or my family, my children or my slave. Then he says that every day I used to do that. I would offer the milk first to my parents and then to the rest of the family. Mm. One day when I took my livestock for grazing, I went too far. And before I could arrive and milk the, uh, the cattle and then bring the milk, they had fallen asleep. Allah. My parents had fallen asleep. So that night, I did not offer the milk to my family, to my children. They were crying, but I did not. Allah. And I kept it for my parents. First they must drink, then the rest of the family. And then he said, Ya Allah, if I have done it for your sake, for your pleasure, then open the way for us. Mm. And when he made dua through this pious deed, the rock moved a little. Subhanallah. But it didn't move enough for them to pass through it. It created a little bit gap, but it wasn't enough for them to pass through it. A, a person needs a lot of gap to pass through something. So the second person now stood up and he made, he, he recalled his good deeds. He said that I used to like my, this one cousin of mine, the female cousin of his, and um, he was very fond of her. And he said that I had a crush on her and, and I wanted to take advantage of her. Mm. So there came a time when she became dependent on him. And he gave a hundred dinars, gold coins. And again tried to persuade her into doing wrong. She then admonished him to have the fear of Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Then he feared Allah. And he abstained from the wrongdoing. And then he says that, oh Allah, he let her go. And he gave her the money too. Allah. He helped her and he let her go without taking advantage of the situation. And he left her for the pleasure of Allah, for the fear. Because he had the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says that, oh Allah, if I did this for your pleasure and for your sake, ya Allah, then open the way for us. Allah. And when he made this dua, the rock moved even further. But it didn't move. There was just a little bit more gap that needed to be created for them to be able to pass through. So the gap wasn't big enough for them to pass through it. And the third person now, he raised his hand in dua. He said, the only one thing that I can recall is that I used to have a business. And um, all my employees that I had employed, I used to pay their wages at the end of the day. But there was one employee who wouldn't collect the wages. He was letting, letting it accumulate and collect. So I collected his wages, but then he never come. He stopped coming. And I invested that money that he had kept by me in the business. Allah. And it earned a lot of money, a lot of profit through that money, subhanAllah. One day that person came, that employee came, and he said, I came to collect my wages, whatever you have made of it. So he said, take whatever you wish from all my assets. He came and took all his assets. Mm, mm. Mm. But this person never mind because he did it for the pleasure of Allah. He said, Ya Allah, if I did it for your pleasure and for your sake, then open the way for us. And when he made dua, the rock moved enough, subhanAllah, this time that enough gap was created for them to pass through it and they were able to get out of the cave. Allah, Akbar, Allah Akbar. So if we truly fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Azza wa Jal will surely create a way for us out of any situation, if it is the Jahannam we are running away from, Allah subhanahu will create the means for you to run away from Jahannam as long as we keep fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the key. Most of you are mentioning a wise person does not look at the short term gains, but look at long term gains, something that is permanent, something that is of value. Hmm. Uh, now, for example, nowadays we try, you know, th there's a thing now in work life, early retirement, mm. people work for yes, their retirement, yes. they even, they, they have even taken policies. And plan it also. Yes, 
plan for their retirement, meaning for the later age. In our old age, who's there to look after us? The children nowadays, Allah, mashallah. So Allah. who's there to look after us? So with that in mind, they have taken out, you know, uh, plans, um, retirement plans, and they put a portion of their salary, their wages every month mm. to for it to accumulate. And then um, at the end, they will get some lump sum towards the age of retirement. That is 60, 70 different places, different ages uh, towards somewhere towards there. And um, we're not even sure whether you'll be able to touch that money. You know, as the Shair says, Aagah apni maut se koi bashar nahi, saman so baras ka hai, pal ki khabar nahi. Allah. So we have been accumulating for our old age, for our retirement plans. But we don't know that tomorrow, the next moment we could be dead. Allah knows best. But then, if we could save for our age of retirement, that is not a major uh, phase of the life. Like for example, okay, that is few last few years of your life. Mm. So that is like a, a small percentage of our lives. And we are taking such great precautions from now. Why aren't we worried about that life that will be there forever? The permanent life of the hereafter. Allah Azza wa Jal will even destroy death. He will destroy death. Allahu Akbar. And then he will say to the dwellers of heavens and hell that there will be no death from now on allah 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 Akbar. so yes why don't we prepare for that life those who will remain in hell the residents of hell the kuffar the mushrikeen they will remain in there forever and those who remain in jannah they will remain in jannah forever the mu'mineen the pious predecessors the solaha the Anbiya, the Awliya, the Siddiqeen, the Shuhada, they will remain therein forever. It is our choice, which choice do we make? The life is permanent there, whether this side or that side. Which side do we want to turn into? And we have made our choice, Alhamdulillah, on this planet Earth. If we have, Alhamdulillah, gotten the wealth of Iman, we have practiced on the pious deeds, we have earned virtues, and we have abstained from sins, then we have Alhamdulillah, uh, we have made our choice. And those who are not worried about the Iman, the Iman is taken away, their deeds are none the better. For them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best where they, where they will end up. So we need to make sure about our own well-being because on the day of judgment, it will be such that each soul will be asked about their own affairs. Allah, Allah. Like nobody will be like, I won't be asked about what you have done mm. with your life. Neither will you be asked what I've done with my life in this dunya. Each one for themselves. Even the mother won't recognize her own child. Allah. The father will fail to recognize his own son. So that is... Uh, the merciful nature of the beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa who will take care of us when our parents, our mothers and fathers will fail to recognize us. He will call us, come here, I'm here for you. Subhanallah. Allah. Let's inshallah azza wa jal make dua that Allah azza wa jal grants us the intercession of beloved Mustafa Ameen. sallallahu alayhi wa and through his intercession we are forgiven and entered into Jannah. Sayyidi, as we have come uh, towards the end of our episode and program, inshallah, any parting words and nasiha from you. Alhamdulillah, we have heard so many beautiful Madani pearls, so many beautiful advices from the narrations and from the parables, from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one thing that we should focus on in our lives as we do not know when we are going to die and death is something that is certain and one thing that we should always do on a daily basis is to always repent in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal, to always uh, make istighfar because we do not know when we are going to die and making istighfar 
repenting in the court of Allah as in as it is mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the one who repents from his sin is like the one who hasn't sinned at all subhanallah, subhanallah. so we should make this our habit and this is something that you know we take lightly we tend to forget and not really uh, look into it so this is something that we should uh, look into on a daily basis seeking repentance in the court of Allah Azza wa Jalla and inshallah by virtue of this we will gain salvation from Jahannam from hell Amin bijahin nabi ameen tubu ila Allah astaghfirullah sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dear viewers alhamdulillah as uh, the time has come where we conclude our today's episode and program. But before that, we have made a promise to you that inshallah will reveal the correct answer for today's question right at the end of today's episode and program. And the time has come to fulfill our promise. But before that, we are going to watch this beautiful nasiha and then we're going to be back and reveal to you the correct answer for today's question. Sallu ala al-Habib ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The aim of Psalm is to attain piety and abstinence. Since one treats one's nafs strictly during Psalm, preventing it even from halal eating and drinking items. So Psalm is actually a practice of overcoming one's desire. This builds up the strength to control one's nafs and to refrain from haram. And this act of controlling one's nafs and overcoming desires are the basis of prevention from sins. A perfect psalm is one in which apparent and spiritual manners of psalm are fulfilled. Spiritual manners of psalm are mentioned in blessed ahadith as well. The blessed Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said, there are so many psalm observers who gain nothing from their siyam except hunger and thirst. The brief meaning of the spiritual manners of psalm described by religious imam is to observe the psalm of all parts of the body i.e to protect them from sins and useless activities let's listen some manners of fasting first manner keep your eyes lowered and protect them from looking at everything condemn and dislike protect your heart from thoughts causing heedlessness, negligence from the remembrance of Allah Almighty. Second manner, the tongue should be protected from useless conversation, lying, backbiting, telltaling, indecent conversation, bad manners and quarrels. Third manner, protect your ears from listening to everything that is disallowed and disliked by our religion. Fourth manner, do not also commit sins with your hands feet and other body parts. In addition to these banners, there is another very important point to be kept in mind. At the time of starting the psalm, we make an intention in our heart that I am intending to keep tomorrow's fast. Similarly, we should also make an intention in our heart that I will achieve the real aim of psalm, i.e. piety by fulfilling all the apparent and spiritual manners of psalm. Besides, continue to repeat the intention of piety in your heart during the day. Keep an eye on your actions, conversation and matters. Whether you are fulfilling the inner manners of Psalm or not. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Welcome back dear viewers and the question that was asked in the beginning of today's episode and program was that the initial verses of which surah were revealed first? And you had four options to choose from. Option A, Surah Al-Falaq. Option B, Surah Al-Alaq. Option C, Surah Al-Fatiha. And option D, Surah Al-Waqiha. And the correct answer is displayed on your screen. The correct answer is Surah Al-Alaq. Subhanallah. The initial verses of Surah Al-Alaq. In particular, five verses of Surah Al-Alaq were first revealed. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. So yes, now you know the correct answer and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase you in your Islamic knowledge. Amin bijahin nabi Until next time, 
صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Oh Allah, I ask you to grant me paradise.